Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to Out of Spec Guide. Max here today with another video about charging. I know, I know we have lots of charging content on this channel. We have more vehicle tests, efficiency comparisons, interesting car stuff to talk about. But I do want to make this video today because one, weather's not great and the test I wanted to do uh, with an efficiency comparison is not possible. But also because I just got my card in the mail from EVgo. So EVgo and ChargePoint will both give you a physical card in the mail that uses what's called RFID or NFC. Uh, basically, this is similar if you have a credit card that uses this technology or you used a hotel key. I mean, you've probably used this technology in your life before. It just means it's a contactless tap for a card at readers that support it. So hope I didn't show my barcode there. I don't know. Anyhow, this card uh, has that baked in. It came in my address to the mail for free when I signed up for an EVgo account and I activated it through the phone app. And so I did that very easy, very self-explanatory. You just go in the app. I'll show screenshots here, what I'm talking about. And you go and sign up for a program card with EVgo. Might be slightly different for ChargePoint, but it doesn't matter because you can use this EVgo card at ChargePoint. And ChargePoint is making, sorry, EVgo is making it easy. So is ChargePoint to activate chargers. This video specifically is gonna be about two methods of charging that I think are gonna make your life so much simpler, so much better if your car is eligible. Every car is eligible for this card, so we're gonna do that first, but every car is also eligible, or not every car, but a lot of CCS cars are eligible for a program called Auto Charge Plus that EVgo uses, which basically, well, lets you just plug in and not worry about it. The car automatically speaks to the charger and bills your payment. So we're gonna do that in the second part of this video. I'm really excited to set up my Polestar for that. But first, let's use this plastic card and let me explain to you why this, as low tech as it may seem, is super important and you don't wanna be caught without one. So I parked next to my EV Go station here at Patricio, which they give you this name so you can activate it in the app. But I won't need that today because, well, all I need is this card. Looks like someone just charged here, but I'm going to tap my card and it should theoretically be recognized. But then I'm going to plug in again. So EVgo does say you should plug in first and then authenticate once that charging screen is clear as we've learned. So I'm going to plug in, make sure it clicks. There we go. Heard the click this time. Okay, yellow. That means it's getting ready, authenticating. Um, Press OK on the previous screen, press start. I have plugged in, tap my program card. And I have, by the way, because I have an EVgo account, this is my same payment method for that. It just, when you set up the app, that's all it does. So now it says preparing, fingers crossed. I think now we're gonna be good to go. Yeah, we're starting, okay. Excuse the super high state of charge. Again, demonstration purposes. So why did I bother with this piece of plastic when I can do this on my phone? Let me get in the car and explain to you. So these cards are super useful because apps don't always work. If you use technology, use phones, you know this is the case. You don't just have to be older or boomer. It happens to me too, and I'm a fairly tech savvy younger fella. So I am always bugged with this. Sometimes you don't have cell service, which means you can't use the app. You can't connect to the services you need to find the charger, be it Electrify America, um, ChargePoint or EVgo. Now I will say here, Electrify America, does not be physical cards. However, in their app, and I will show this in screenshots because everyone needs to set this up if you're traveling cross country and using Electrify America, the most common set of DC fast chargers for non-Tesla cars, you need to set up what's called RFID, Apple Wallet on iPhone is the name, the branding for that. On Androids, I believe it's Google Wallet or something like that. But basically, when you set this up, everything changes because let me tell you, I was stuck with when I got this car, my first time owning an electric car, I've always been activating with the app before when I drove press cars for out of spec or I drove some of Kyle's cars. But when I got my own car, I learned that if you're in an area sometimes when you're on a road trip with no cell service on your carrier, in my case, AT&T, you might be SOL if you're depending on the app. And you might say, well, Max, Electrify America has card readers. Why didn't you use a card reader? Well, one, I was an Electrify America member, so I wouldn't know that I'm a member, I'd be billed a higher rate. But you know, if I had to do that, I could. However, I couldn't in this case, because like many times, the card readers were down. Now there's several reasons card readers are unreliable. Those generic credit card readers you see at Electrify America stations, EVgo stations have them too, I believe. Charge points don't, because they try to make them more compact and simple, fair enough. Um, they're a high common point of failure. They just get damaged frequently. They lose connection to the billing. And it's really one of the most 
um, unreliable ways to activate. You really should never depend on them, even though it may seem like the simplest method. So with Electrify America, once you set up an account, whether or not you're a paid member, being paid with Electrify America just means you pay four bucks a month and you get a cheaper charge rate. Whether or not you're a paid member, as long as you have an account with them, you can, for free, get this RFID card on your phone. That's great, I do it, and then that way it's stored on my phone as basically a virtual card that I tap my phone to where prompted on their stalls for Electro by America. But this video is about EVgo. So with EVgo and their card, it's the same process. I um, just use this physical card, and this physical card's even easier. I don't have to unlock my phone, don't have to uh, use Apple Wallet or anything. Um, so always, always super reliable to have this. Maybe I will activate with the app, maybe it's easier. And like I'll show you later in this video, maybe I use Auto Charge Plus, which is gonna be super cool. However, if my car's not eligible for that, if that's not working, or you know, just any kind of uh, failures happen, this is, I think, the dumbest, but also most reliable way to charge. Have one of these in your wallet, carry it with you on road trips, or heck, maybe just keep it in your car somewhere safe. And um, it can't be used as a credit card, just so you know. It can only be used at EVgo stations. And let's say it does get stolen, you can deactivate it fairly easily. And all someone's gonna be able to do is charge your electric cars with it. You'll see that activity. You can deactivate the car through the app um, or by calling them. So don't worry about that part. I think these cards are super useful. This is not an EVgo ad. It's just, I found at EVgo the most reliable way to activate. And it works at any charge point stall. And there are so many charge point stalls out there. I'll throw in some pictures right now of what those look like. You've probably seen them around if you're an EV driver or even if you're not, they're everywhere. So this card is super versatile to have once your account is set up with EVgo. Please get one of these and keep it somewhere safe. All right, so EVgo Auto Charge Plus. You go in the app, you go into the Vehicles tab, and then you're going to see your eligible vehicle if it's there. Compatibility list, I'll screenshot that. Hopefully your car is eligible. You'll go, and then you'll get your VIN. So you need that from your car. Usually it's on the windshield, but you might have it on your insurance card. Who knows where? But get your VIN, enter that, either scan it or manually enter it. You just uh, enter that, you hit Add VIN, and then you're ready. Now, once it does that, you're gonna get an email from EVgo once that's successful with the request. Then you have to select a charging station. So if you're already at one, select that one. Then it's gonna prompt you to have 60 seconds to plug in the CCS connector once you start that charge and say that you're doing it to set up Auto Charge Plus and then everything should work. You have to wait a bit, but then the handshake process should happen and you should be good to go. Okay, just enrolled in auto charge. I screen recorded everything so you can see what that process looks like. But basically, once you select the charger that you want to use, you do that in the app after you've verified your VIN, if your vehicle is compatible, EVgo will do a good job of letting you know if it is, because they'll have the VIN verification. And then once you do that, you're good. That means when you pull up to EVgo stations, uh, their CCS fast chargers, you just plug your vehicle in and it recognizes, communicates, uses your payment automatically. You don't even need to use this card, no phone apps, nothing. It's really cool. So now my vehicle is registered. And I think just because for the convenience of this, I'll be using EVgo a lot more often. I should mention Electrify America has a program similar to this. They brand it plug and charge. It's their version of the same standard. Unfortunately, my car, the Polestar 2 doesn't support it because Polestar has not enrolled in plug and charge. This is something your automaker needs to do. So if your automaker is not enrolled yet, sorry, nothing you can do. However, I just will say generally for compatibility purposes, Auto Charge Plus, a lot more cars that work on it than plug and charge right now. But very exciting, and I think that's the way to do it. Frictionless, much easier. Okay, for demonstration purposes, I've reparked to the station that's next to me, Julieta, because the leaf just left. Good timing, couldn't make that up. But uh, we're gonna see, does Auto Charge Plus work? Since I've just enrolled my car right now in the app, like five minutes ago, how quickly does it work? It says we should be all good to go. Let's see if that's the case. Okay, just plugged in, didn't do anything. What is it saying? Payments authorized, whoa, let's go. So all is set to go. And it's one thing on these 50 kilowatt ABB units, but on a road trip, let's say I'm making lots of stops, I'm lucky enough to come across the Delta, really fast charging EVgo hardware. I'll be all set, super easy. Let's just make sure this session actually starts because it is CCS. Good, it's starting. I'm gonna unplug immediately because I'm in a stupid high state of charge, but glad I can make that demo work. And oh my gosh, Auto Charge Plus, love to see it. Uh, hope that becomes normal. Hope this Polestar and more brands get plug-in charge. Theoretically, a lot of vehicles with a CCS port are capable. They have what's called basically 
uh, the ISO 15118 standard to enable this, a lot of them just haven't implemented it on their back end yet. But Polestar at least has by working with EVgo for Auto Charge Plus. So that's cool. That seems to be even easier than the card. However, both methods are great ways to activate. And I would really have both of them in your pocket, literally have this in your pocket, and I guess have the other one in the cloud somewhere in your vehicle stored in the firmware. If your vehicle is eligible, that's a PSA. Hope this video has been helpful and I'll see you next time on Add a Spec Guide.